boys and girls, welcome back to Sunday School. Hope you had a good week. And this week we're going to continue our lessons uh, in telling others about Jesus. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Acts 16, 31. So I hope you might have thought this week a little bit about talking to someone about Jesus or telling someone what Jesus has done for you. Well, my first question for the day is, what do we need? Sometimes when we get ready to take a trip or play a game or do something, we need things to help us uh, to do that. So I have some cards here, and our cards are going to help us to play this game a little. It's not a game, it's just a question. So it says, what do you need? to travel to a different country. Well, of course, you need some something to get you there, right? Like an airplane. Most of the time when we go to other countries, we fly there. Uh, sometimes you could drive to South America or up to Canada. Uh, let's see what's next. What do we need uh, to make popsicles? I don't know if any of you have ever made popsicles, but you need something to hold them in. A popsicle holder, or we used to make them in Dixie cups. So, let's see here. Well, what do you need to build a campfire? Well, I imagine most of you know that. You, of course, need some wood. And probably matches too, although I think you can rub two of those special rocks together and get you a spark. Okay, what do you need uh, if you're going to walk your dog? Well, nowadays you have to almost always have some type of a leash or something around your dog to keep them close by so they don't run off or chase somebody or chase a squirrel. All right, let's see. What do you need to play a game? Well, let's see. I know most of you play video games, uh, so you need the, I guess you call it a remote, or um, uh, you need the part that helps push the buttons to make the game go. You can tell how many video games Miss Mary's play, can't you? Not very many. Okay, what do you need to go swimming? Well, the first thing you probably need if you're going to go swimming is water. Uh, some kind of water, a pool or a lake or a stream or a pond, something uh, where they allow you to go swimming. Make sure that's safe. And what do you need to bake cookies? Mm. Well, of course, you need something to bake them on and something to lift them off with, and you also need ingredients. So, our question is, what do we need to tell others about Jesus? Hmm. Well, of course, we need to have faith. We need to believe uh, that Jesus is the Son of God, and uh, we need to accept Him as our Lord and Savior. And I know you've been talking about that some. And the other thing that you need is His Word. You need God's Word so that you can hide it. Where? You can hide it in your heart. So you have to know God's Word in your head, know His Word, and hide it in your heart. And then you will live a life. You will live the way that Jesus wants you to live. So, in order to know a little bit about Jesus, you can read in his, in the God's Word here, the Bible. Uh, Jesus said seven things about himself. And he said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I am the Resurrection and the Life. 
He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. And he also said, I am the true vine. Now those are things you'll talk about as you grow in Jesus. But he's telling you some things about himself. The thing that we know most about him is that he is the Son of God. He is our Lord and Savior because he died on the cross. He laid down his life for us. And he rose up again. He was resurrected so that we could be God's child and have, what's that called? That's right, eternal life so that we could have live forever with God. All right. So there's a psalm that I was going to read to you, just a verse from this psalm, 66, verse 16. It says, Come, listen. All you who fear God, let me tell you what he has done for me. Well, that's exactly what the Apostle Paul did. We know that he was angry about this Jesus from Nazareth, calling himself the Son of God. He, he could not believe that uh, because he'd grown up in a Jewish home and he knew about God. He knew the Old Testament. He knew the prophets, what they had said about the Messiah coming. But he did not believe that this Jesus was the Messiah. So he was angry and he went about and arrested, put him in, had him put in prison, the ones who believed, and he even killed some. He was on his way to Damascus. And we know a light, a bright, blinding light, hit him and blinded him. And when he was, went into Damascus to a believer named Ananias, and Ananias prayed for Paul, and Paul's sight came back. And it says after he had eaten some food and got his strength back, he went right to the synagogue. A synagogue is a Jewish church. He went right there and he started telling the people there, the Jewish people, that Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Messiah that came. And he died and he rose again so that they could be saved for eternal life. Well, these people, these Jewish people, heard about Paul, what he was doing, and they were afraid of him because they knew what he had done in the past. And they didn't think that he could change. So they made plans to kill Saul. Remember, Paul is his Greek name, and Saul is his Hebrew name. So. What they did is the people, Ananias' friends and the other believers, they warned Paul that the other Jews were going to kill him, had a plan for that. So they got together and they lowered him out of an opening in the wall. There was a wall around Damascus. And they lowered him down <clears throat> to out of the city at night, so no one knew, and he left and went to an area called Arabia, which wasn't too far, but it was far enough. It wasn't like this next door. And he was there for three years. It tells us in his letter to the Galatian church, chapter one, he tells us I, he was there for three years, and then, he went back into Damascus and went to Jerusalem where he met with Peter and James, the brother of Jesus, just for a short time. He didn't stay there long. He just wanted to make sure that uh, he was telling everything correctly about Jesus and he wanted to learn more. So then 
he tells us in Galatians that he went back to the Damascus area for 14 years. That's a long time. Some of you are not even 14 years old yet. So he went back for 14 years, and during that time, he taught and preached the gospel. He first always taught in the synagogue where the Jewish people would be, and then he mostly taught in the streets to unbelievers, those that were called Gentiles that did not believe in one true God. They believed in whatever God that city had. So from there, Paul met Barnabas. Barnabas was also a follower of Jesus and a disciple. And Barnabas encouraged Paul. He said, Paul, you need to go back to Jerusalem. And they did. They went together and Barnabas gave a testimony he told about Paul. And he said to Paul, to the apostles there, Peter and John and the different ones, James, he said, Paul has had a change in his life. He believes in Jesus and he t teaches the gospel faithfully everywhere he goes. And so they encouraged Paul and Barnabas, the apostles did, to go on out into the area of Asia and in the Roman Empire there and to be missionaries and teach and preach about Jesus. And that's what Paul did with his life. That's the plan that God had for him. He was telling others about Jesus. So we know that Paul talked to them about the gospel. He always said three different things when he would talk about the gospel. He would first tell them about his life before he knew Jesus. Then he would tell them about his life when God called him to know Jesus. And then he would tell about his life after Jesus, all the places he traveled and the things that he had done and the things that had happened to him. And you can read about a lot of those things in the book of Acts, all the way to chapter, 20, from chapter 13 to chapter 26, it tells you about Paul and all of his journeys. So, <clears throat> okay, we are going to uh, think, what, what does God want us to know about telling others about Jesus from this lesson? Well, we know that he wants us to know Jesus. He wants us to be his child and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We also know, have learned, that we need to give a testimony. What does Jesus do in your life? Has, is there something that Jesus has done in your life in the last year or last week that you could tell others about how wonderful he was or how good he is, how loving he is, how caring he is? You could talk to your mom and dad and say, ask mom and dad, and say, what, what has Jesus done in our family, in our lives, that we could share with other people? And also know that Jesus has a plan for you. He has a plan for you to serve him as a follower, a believer. And also, he's given you a gift. The Holy Spirit will help you in knowing what the gift is that you can do to help others to serve God and to be a good witness uh, that someone who tells the truth and you would be telling the truth, giving your testimony about Jesus. So just keep those things in mind. This week you might think, take time to think, 
what do I know about Jesus? How could I tell others about Jesus? So we have a work page for you this week. This is your work page, and you can find it online. I have Mom and Dad print it out for you. And before we go, I have a little chart. I thought we might review the New Testament books. Excuse me here, there. And so, so as you get into the New Testament, you can <clears throat> know right where those books are or about where they're at. So let's just go, before we leave, let's just go and see if we can say these books as a book. Oh, this Mary's paper fell. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let me get a hold of it here. A little bit differently. All right. Here we go. New Testament. The first four books. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Good job. Okay. Let's see here. Acts. What's next? Romans. And then two C's. First and second Corinthians. And we have a G. Galatians. Ephesians. Philippians. Colossians. Oops, Miss Mary's paper's not cooperating here. First and second Thessalonians. And then two more T's. First and second Timothy and Titus. All right. So, how many of those books of the Bible? Be thinking now. Did actually did Paul write that were letters to cities where he wrote to? Them? Okay, the rest of the New Testament here. P is, <clears throat> yep, Philemon, Philemon, Hebrews, James, two P's here, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, four J's, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Jude. And the last book of the New Testament, Revelation. Also, remember, Paul wrote, Paul wrote Romans down through Philemon, 13 of the books of the New Testament. Okay, we're going to end with a little prayer here, and Miss Mary just wants you to now this scripture here, it says, I tell you, whoever acknowledges me, this is Jesus talking, he says, I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man, that's what Jesus called himself sometimes, will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. And that's Luke chapter 12, verse 8. So boys and girls, as you grow in knowing God and telling others about Him, Jesus knows that. And you will be acknowledged in heaven, eternal life, to the angels of God. That's a wonderful, wonderful reward. Not that we do it for a reward. We tell others about Jesus because we love him. And he's loved us. And we share that part of our life. He is our life. Let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word and help these boys and girls to learn more about you. I pray that they have a hunger and a desire to be your child, to accept you as their Lord and Savior, to grow and be sanctified in you, and that they will live their life, they will live and give of their life to others for the glory 
and the praise to you. We thank you, Lord, for these things that you've taught us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, and don't forget, you have a great opportunity coming up to share Jesus with others at your Vacation Bible School in July. Be sure and invite all your friends and families that live in your neighborhood to come and be part of our Vacation Bible School online this year. I love you all and have a great week. Bye-bye.